All right. Uh, hi, hi, everyone. This is Rob Barnett from Bloomberg Intelligence. I'm sitting here with Jeff Cooper from the Renewable Fuels Association. We are at uh, Bloomberg's uh, summit in Kansas City, and we just had a great discussion up on stage. I want to see if we can capture uh, some of this for our online audience. And so uh, tell me, what are the biggest opportunities and challenges, challenges facing the biofuel industry right now? Well, we think, Rob, one of the biggest opportunities for the ethanol industry moving forward is the move toward decarbonization. And whether we're talking about state or federal governments here in the U.S. or around the world, uh, there is a real move to either reward or require uh, decarbonization when it comes to transportation fuels. And ethanol can do that. Ethanol today made from corn is reducing greenhouse gas emissions by about 50 percent compared to gasoline. Uh, so we think ethanol, you know, is very attractive as a near term opportunity for decarbonizing liquid fuels, uh, both in traditional markets like the gasoline pool, uh, but also when we think about the aviation sector and sustainable aviation fuels, as well as maritime and, and off road uses as well. So one of the big struggles or challenges is perhaps the rise of electric vehicles. Do you, do you think EVs are ultimately going to crowd out biofuels? And what's what are the other opportunities that maybe exist outside of transportation if, if that is a, a risk? Well, certainly we think electrification is going to have an impact on demand long term for liquid fuels, uh, but it's going to take time. There are 275 million light duty vehicles registered in the U.S. today. Of those, about three and a half million are battery electric. So we're at basically 1% of the on-road fleet today. We know that's going to increase, but it's going to take decades, we think, before electric vehicles make up, you know, even a majority of the on-road fleet. Uh, but over that time, yeah, we are going to see some attrition and, and some loss in liquid fuel consumption. And that means less ethanol consumption because ethanol is blended into gasoline. Uh, however, we think we can counteract some of that by blending more ethanol in gasoline. Today, the standard is about 10%, uh, but every vehicle built after 2001 is legally approved to use 15% ethanol. Uh, so that will help. But then we think outside of that traditional market, we see significant opportunity, billions of gallons of opportunity in aviation and, and marine shipping and, and other non-traditional uses. So. Sustainable aviation fuel is very nascent. Uh, we're, we're really at sort of the starting line for that. What kind of things need to happen to really get the pathway uh, lined up so that you really see this kind of fuel take off? Yeah, uh, one of the biggest things we're focused on right now is ensuring that uh, sustainable aviation fuel made from ethanol will qualify for uh, a tax credit that was included in the Inflation Reduction Act. It's, it's a very valuable credit worth up to $1.75 per gallon. And that's what really helps bridge the gap uh, between the cost of production for petroleum jet fuel and sustainable aviation fuel. So if, if we can get our foot in the door and get ethanol based jet fuel to qualify for that tax credit, we think it, it could really help open that marketplace up. Uh, and, and so it all comes down to the carbon modeling and what assumptions are made and, and what inputs are, are used in these models to measure the carbon intensity of, of these various sustainable aviation fuel sources. And I think you spend a lot of your time walking up and down the, the aisles of uh, Washington, D.C. So what, what are the biggest misconceptions you hear about biofuels and, and what, are, what are the real big ask that the industry has for lawmakers right now as well? Yeah, I, I think probably our biggest ask is just give us a level playing field and, and an opportunity, uh, you know, whether we're talking about tailpipe emission standards, you know, the, the scales in that regulation are definitely tilted toward electrification, uh, whether it's the RFS or other programs, give us a, a level playing field and the opportunity to, to compete. And we're very confident that ethanol's properties and its low cost are, are going to make sure that it has a, a place in the future fuels mix in our country. Um, you know, and in terms of I'm sorry. Uh, in, in terms of our, our policy asks, I mean, it's, that's really what it comes down to is just a, a level playing field. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. I want to thank you so much for joining us at our farm 
Food and Fuel Summit. Uh, it's been really great to speak to you today. Thank you. Likewise. Thanks for having me, Rob. Cheers. Appreciate it.